Welcome back to another video. In this episode, we are going to look at how we can handle this particular problem on the board. Okay. So this is uh, a probability density function uh, problem. Okay. And we want to show that uh, the function f satisfies the, uh, the requirement for being a probability density function. Okay. So this is the function that we have been given. This is the function f of x equals 2x and under the range 0 less than or equal to less than x less than 1. Okay, so this is the function and this is the range. So we want to check if this particular function satisfies the condition for being a density function. And you know that if a function will satisfy the uh, the probability density function, okay, for being part of the density function one, it must be non-negative. So you can see clearly that f of x equals two x. Looking at the range, uh, is a non-negative uh, function. So the first condition satisfies. Okay, so the first condition where f of x should be greater than zero is uh, holds. Okay, so the first condition holds. The second condition is when you integrate the total, uh, when you integrate from negative infinity to positive infinity uh, of the function, okay, should be equal to zero, uh, positive one. So when you integrate from negative infinity to positive infinity of the function, the total should be equal to positive one. So if these two conditions hold, then you can say that this particular function f of x equals 2x satisfy the condition for being part of a uh, density function. So we know that the first one has hold. So let's try and check if the second one will work. So the second one, we are going to integrate from 0 to 1 of the function 2x dx, and that should give us 1. So integrating 2x, we have 2x squared over 2 on the limit 0 to 1, right? And you can see that this takes off this. So we have x squared from 0 to 1, OK? And this one, basically, when you substitute the limit, you are going to have 1 squared minus 0 squared, and that is equal to 1. So we can see that we have 1 equals 1, and this uh, makes it satisfy the condition or the requirement for being a density function. Thus, we can say that thus f satisfies, satisfies the requirement for being a density function. Okay, so once f satisfies the condition for being a density function, the next question is, we should find the probability of 0 0.2 less than x less than 0 0.5. Okay, so now we are going to use the same function, okay? We are using the same function to Calculate the probability of the probability of 0 0.2 less than x less than 0 0.5. Okay, so this we have been given the range. So over the range of the function. So we have from 0 0.2 to 0 0.5 of the function f of x dx. Okay, and this should be equal to 0 0.2. 0 0.5 of the function which is 2x dx okay so this when you integrate 2x you're going to have 2x squared over 2 over 0 0.2 to 0 0.5 okay and this is basically s squared over 0 0.2 to 0 0.5 okay so here we can see that you can see that 
for the substitute the limit we're going to have 0 0.5 squared minus 0 0.2 squared right and this is basically 0. Point, um, basically 0 0.25 0 0.25 minus 0 0.04 Okay, so this, when you compute it zero, very well, you're going to have 0 0.21. Okay, so we can say that that's the probability of 0 0.2 less than x less than 0 0.5 is equal to 0 0.21. So that's for the i. The i, i. We have been given a conditional probability that is 0 0.2 less than x less than 0 0.5, given that x is greater than 0 0.25. Okay, so this is a conditional probability. So we have to treat it as such, right? And we know the condition for uh, the conditional probability, right? We know that probability of A given B is equal to probability of A intersection B over probability of B, right? So once we know this property, we can go ahead and do this conditional probability with C, all right? So from here, from here, so from here, we can say that this probability of A given B is equal to probability of A intersection B over probability of B. We can say that here, our A is equal to the range, okay? Our A is equal to the range, which is 0 0.2 less than X less than 0 0.5, okay? And our B is equal to um our b is equal to 0 point x greater than 0 0.25 so that is if you are able to identify these informations then you can do the ii part okay so once we have this we just have to compute the probability of 0 0.2 less than x less than 0 0.25 uh, less than 0 0.5. Okay, so here we have to write that probability of 0 0.2 less than x less than 0 0.5, given that x is less than 0 0.2, s is greater than 0 0.25 in the probability condition form, the conditional probability form. So that basically gives us that basically gives us probability of 0 0.25, right, less than um, x, um, less than x, right, 0 point, less than x, less than 0 0.5, okay divided by probability of x right probability of x greater than 0 0.25 so this is the conditional probability that you get from this right here so this is the expression we can write from this conditional probability okay so from here from here From here, from here, we can say that we can say that probability of 0 0.25, probability of 0 0.25 less than x less than 0 0.5, right? This particular one, right, is we can compute this particular one. Then when we are done, we divide it by the, the probability of x greater than 0 0.25. Okay, so let's do 
the enumerator when we are done then we handle it with the denominator as well okay so we integrate this from 0 0.25 to 0 0.5 of the function right so this we are going to have from 0 0.25 to 0 0.5 of 2x dx okay so this is basically equal to x squared 0 0.25 0 0.5 here so this one when you substitute the limit 0 0.5 squared minus 0 0.25 squared so this is equal to 0 0.25 minus uh, 0 0.25 minus 0 0.0625 okay so this is what we have okay this is what you have so this one when you do the computations very well you're going to have 0 0.0.1875 so that is the probability for this one Okay, so now we combine it with the denominator, which is the probability of x greater than 0 0.25. Okay, so with that, with that, we know that, we know that, we know that probability of x greater than 0 0.25, okay? Now, that one, you know that x is greater than 0 0.25. So this, you integrate from 0 0.25 to 1. Okay. x is greater than 0 0.25. So you integrate from that 0 0.25 to 1 because the condition is this. The range is 0 is less than x less than 1. Okay. So once they've given you this, then you your lower lower limit will be this and then you go for the upper limit from here okay so this is what we have so we integrate that to the function okay so you know that when you integrate 2x you are going to have s squared right from 0 0.25 to 1 over here and that is equal to um 1 squared minus 0 0.25 squared right and that is basically one minus 0 0.25 is 0 0.0625 okay so that when you compute it very well you're going to have probability of x greater than 0 0.25 equals uh, 0 0 0.0.9375 so that is the probability of x greater than 0 0.25. So now we have this, we have this. So we divide that by this. So now we can see that, now we can see that our probability, our conditional probability is now 0 0.25 less than x less than 0 0.5 given that x is greater than 0 0.25 will be equal to 0 0.1875 over 0 0.9375 and that is basically equal to 0 0.2 0 0.2 so that is that's probability of 0 0.2 less than x less than 0 0.5 given that x is greater than 0 0.25 is basically equal to 0 0.2 so ladies and gentlemen that is the process we use to uh, analyze this particular problem don't uh, bother yourself too much just understand the principles or the properties in uh density function you know that if you want to check if a particular function satisfies the density function 
first condition is the function must be a non-negative function. So the function must be greater than zero. Then the second one is the total probability. When you sum everything, it should be equal to one. Okay, so the function that you have been given, when you integrate from negative infinity to positive, positive infinity, specifically over the range that you have been given, when you finish everything, it should be equal to one. So if these two conditions holds, then you can see that that particular function or that particular uh, probability density function satisfy the requirement for being a, a, a probability density function. And then this particular function that follows just have to understand the conditions for uh, conditional probability uh, okay, so basically, uh, that is how we do this work. Go over, rewatch, and understand it very well. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate your time. Don't forget to subscribe, share with your mates, and I'll give you more updates. Bye bye.